But when power must defend its hegemony, it never hesitates to use violence. Nonetheless, there are individuals who escape mental control, but they are under surveillance. Every uprising or act of resistance is considered deviant behavior or an act of terrorism. Freedom is reserved for those who defend the commercial interests. Henceforth, the real opposition to the dominant system is totally clandestine. For its retractors, Repression is the consequence. The silence of the majority of slaves facing this repression is the result of a political and media campaign that denies the existence of this real conflict. As with all oppressed human beings throughout history, the modern slave needs mysticism and God to anesthetize the evil that torments him and the suffering that overwhelms him. But this new God to whom he gave his soul is naught but nothingness, a piece of paper, a number, that through his common consent acquires artificial value. It is in the name of this God that people work, study, fight, and sell themselves. It is for this God that man forsakes his values and is prepared to do whatever. He believes that the more money he possesses, the more free he will be from all constraints, as though ownership and freedom went hand in hand. But freedom is the asceticism that comes from self-control from the desire and will to act, to be, not to have. One must resolve to never serve or obey under any condition. To be free, it is necessary to break with habits that no one, it seems, dare challenge. Today's slave is convinced that there is no alternative to the existing world order. He has resigned himself to this life because he believes there is no other. Herein lies the force of the present domination. Maintain the illusion that this system, which has colonized the entire world, is the end of history. It has convinced the subjugated class that this ideology is mankind's true state of nature and is such his logical condition. To dream a different world has become a crime condemned in unison by the media and all the entities of power. When in reality, the criminal is he who contributes, consciously or not, to the dementia of the dominant social structure. There is no greater madness than that of the present system. In light of the world's devastation, the system needs to conquer the slave's conscience. At an early age, repression takes the form of dissuasion and is used to educate slaves. They must forget their servile condition, their prisons and their miserable lives. The sight of hypnotized masses connected to the screens that accompany them in their daily lives is proof enough.
they disguise their permanent dissatisfaction with the distorted image of a dream life made of money, glory, and adventure. But their dreams are as deplorable as their miserable life. There are images for everything and for everybody. Those images constitute the ideological message of modern society and serve as means of unification and propaganda. As mankind is stripped from his world and his life, these images multiply. Children are the first target of these images. They must be made stupid, bereft of any reflective and critical thinking. All this is done with the disconcerting complicity of their parents, who have surrendered to the modern communication apparatus. They themselves buy the commodities that enslave their offspring. They abdicate their role in their children's education and entrust it to a mediocre and stultifying system. There are images for all ages and for all social classes. Modern slaves mistake those images for culture and at times for art. The market relies on the basest impulses to sell any commodity. It is women, doubly enslaved in today's society, who pay dearest. In it, she is reduced to being a mere object of consumption. The image of uprising has also been divested of its subversive potential. The image is today the simplest and most effective form of communication. It creates role models, it stultifies the masses, it lies to them, and it breeds frustrations in them. The mercantile ideology is disseminated repeatedly through the use of the image. Its objective is always the same, to sell, be it ways of life or products, behaviors or commodities, no matter what, sell. These unfortunate slaves entertain themselves, but the entertainment serves only to distract them from the ills that plague them. Slaves have left their lives in the hands of others to do whatever they will and pretend to take pride in it. They affect satisfaction but nobody believes it. Even before the cold reflection of the mirror, they fail to fool themselves. <laughs> 